everyone, yours truly, Chris Levi 13. And as you all know, I'm a wrestling fan. I like WWE, I like TNA, which is now Impact, which I believe now is going to be GWF. I like ROH, New Japan Pro Wrestling, a bunch of other indie wrestling federations and so forth. I like everybody from Chris Jericho to Chris Saban to Alex Shelley to Zack Saban Jr., Jr. to the Bullet Club to Asaka, to Mickey James, to Belly, to this person, to that person, to Thunder Rosa, to Jor Jordine Grace, and so on and so forth in wrestling. Well, I'm back at it to talk about wrestling with you all the viewers around the world because back when I revamped this channel, I said I wanted to talk about wrestling in a more regular Basis and serious note, and that's exactly what I'm doing because the following video you're about to see is where I talk about the Raw roster because I said I was going to talk about four parts of the WWE roster. Raw, SmackDown, NXT, and the Cruiserweights and the Lemons division on Raw and SmackDown, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, the background is going to change, and I'm going to go over to talking about Raw and its roster as far as it is the males on that roster because the Cruiserweights will have their own thing and as well as the women. Hopefully, you all will end. Now, I am here to talk about Monday Night Raw and its roster. The women and Cruiserweights are being held off for their own separate videos in the future. But as far as Monday Night's Raw's roster, we've got Stephanie McMahon, which is the commissioner for the Monday Night Raw, which we haven't seen her since she got hurt at WrestleMania, supposedly. Then, who Kurt Angle is the Monday Night Raw GM, who took over for Mick Foley. And so far, I've enjoyed what Kurt Angle is doing on Monday Night Raw. They got a little bit of a storyline going with him, and we'll see where that he heads itself. You know, but overall, Kurt Angle is one of my favorite wrestlers in the whole wide world, one of the favorite people in the whole wide world, and I'm just glad to see him on back with the WWE. And hopefully down the road, he can at least do at least one match. Then you go to the commentary, which, you think, which is Booker T, who is... They're there for David Otungo until he comes back, which I don't know if they should. They might want to keep him permanent. They might just have him there for the summer. I don't know. Then we've got one of the longest-running commentators in WWE and Michael Cole. And, man, on Michael Cole. And then we've got Corey Grace, who I like. But some days I, I'm kind of like, ugh, with, his, with the way he he acts. Like he's, you know? But anyway, let's get on to the, to the important part. The wrestlers on Monday Night Raw are, as WWE wants you to know, them, superstars. We've got Brock Lesnar, who's the WWE Universal Champion. And I believe Brock Lesnar should have already defended the WWE Universal Championship since WrestleMania. But WWE's being lazy and letting Brock Lesnar do basically what he wants. And I don't really care for that. I don't really care for Brock Lesnar, but I'm not somebody that's going to sit there and bash and hate on him. He's got his purpose. Then we've got Intercontinental Champion, The Miz, who was a reality star and then jumped to the W. WWE, and I believe, in my opinion, he may not be with the fans or anybody out there, but to me, he is the top heel in the company because he's cocky. <clears throat> he's this, he's that, you know, and he gets reaction out of the fans each and every single time. He does his jo job perfectly, and as an Intercontinental Champion, he is bringing the title's prestige up, even though there's a lot of people out there in the community, community talking on YouTube and so on and so forth that think that title doesn't have the prestige it had back in the day. Then we've got two of my favorite superstars, <laughs> Cesaro, and one of my favorites of all time, Sheamus, as the Raw Tag Team Champions of the World. And I like Sheamus' thing, and I like their tag team. You know, they just aren't the bar. They set the bar. And then we go down to the wrestlers in alphabet order, because I'm looking over here on Wikipedia. <laughs> Damn, my phone looks weird. When you look at it that way. <laughs> but anyway, when it comes down to the superstars, I'm going to say some names to some of them. Some of them I might give a big explanation. Some of them I might give a little. Apollo Cruz is, I think, a guy who should be put down the road in the Intercontinental Championship title mix 
and see if he, you know, and show some more skills. You know, don't just let him be a character that gets boss rag gets thrown in matches and just, it's just getting wasted, really, you know. I believe he's much better than what he has been shown. But I believe he should have been in NXT longer than he was, you know. Because I think he could have could have had a run with the NXT title himself. <laughs> then we go on to Big Cass. Big Cass turned heel on Enzo Amore. And Big Cass has got a big future ahead of him. Hopefully, what he says on the mic can get better. And if it can, cool, great, grand. Then we've got one, a leg <laughs> legend. One of the best of all time. A guy who's been heel face, 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 and the Big Show. Show. Big Show ever since WCW, ever since I first saw him when I was little, watching SmackDown with Rem Steel and and Eddie Guerrero and Batista and all that, I was a fan of Big Show. You know, and he's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's a guy that, without a doubt, doubt, will be remembered. Then we've got Bo Dallas, who who I feel like this needs doesn't need to be on the Miz to rise. Him and Kurt Axel could go for the tag team titles. Him and Kurt Axel put him and Kurt Axel for the tag team titles in a feud with with or in or just put him in a tag team feud with uh Ryan Owen Heath Slater and see do something with that. I don't him being in the Miz Rogers man because Bo Dallas he's got skills. I, he's got something there. And then you got Braun Strowman, the monster among among men. He needs better mic skills, in my opinion. But he doesn't really have to say a lot on the mic due to his, his size. Sorry about the hiccups. Due to his size and Braun Strowman, just, just powerhouse, you know. And hopefully they don't screw him over against Roman Reigns. But also, him and Reigns is getting pretty boring to me. Just honestly. <laughs> Then you go down to the next one, which is Bray Wyatt. Braun Strowman was formerly of the Wyatt family. Bray Wyatt, in ring skills, he is fluid on the mic. I like his character. I like the way he talks, you know, and does things, you know, and hopefully he can keep that on for years to come and he can just continue to grow his character into something like Kane, the Undertaker, and others in history. Then you got. Then I, I want to skip some names because I've already talked about Brock Lesnar. S Sorrow, fan of. He is one of the most fluid, toughest, and powerful guys on the Raw roster with his size. <laughs> then you go to Kurt Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins, ever since he's returned to WWE, the face to back guy, has been mad. I really don't have much to say about, about him because he's just mad. Darren Young, we haven't seen him because he's injured. But I have always liked Darren Young, and I liked him and uh, Titus O'Neil's tag team. You know, millions, millions of dollars, millions of dollars, millions of dollars. Titus O'Neil, I mean, Darren Young, he is worth millions of dollars. Then we've got one half of the Revival in Dash Water. The Revival of the tag team, phenomenal. Phenomenal. What they did on NXT was, was great. The, the way that they don't, they're not about flips, they're about fist and, and, and just wrestling. Hardcore and to the nose. Cool. Can't wait to see them back in a action. Then we've got... I can't see it, but you've seen it in some of my videos. Right over there on the wall, a Dean Ambrose thing from when I was at... I think it's Raw Smackdown. I'm a Dean Ambrose fan through and through. Dean Ambrose, I love love, love his in-ring style. It's different than other people. but And I like his character, but maybe that he can go more into his character other than being what he is right now down the road. And also, when he was with the Shield, Seth wasn't the leader. Roman wasn't the leader. It was Dean Ambrose, because Dean Ambrose used to do the majority of the talking in the beginning of the Shield. He's the one that had the single title. He's the one that, did. you know, that's just my opinion. Then we go to Elias Sampson, the little guitar-playing guy. I'm going to play guitar. I'm going to be tough. And f Hell, in the ring, the several matches I've seen him in the ring, Wow. The way he he's handled himself with Beller and Dean Ambrose, wow. Then from Elias Sampson to Enzo Amore. Enzo Amore is the smack talk for Skywalker. He's a guy that when he's on a mic like this, when he's on the mic, he knows how to talk. He knows he's got a silver tongue, a gold tongue. Money comes out of his mouth. Well, if he could do what he does on his mic, 
and, and, and transition to that to improving his skills, he's got a major career hit him. I just don't want him, when the feud with him and Big, Big Cass ends, to him to be shoved aside as a manager or go to low card or mid card. I want to see him get something out in his career, something memorable. Then we go to the first ever Universal Champion, Finn Beller. Not really much to say about Finn Beller other than he is just top notch. He is one of the top guys on Raw. Hopefully he can be Universal Champion again one day. And hopefully, and I love his interest. And maybe one day the Beller Club will actually come to fruition. Then you go from, let me see how long I've been here. Almost 10 minutes. You go to go to another legend, just like the big show, another legend, another guy that's full for, to me. It's a first ballot, maybe a second, third ballot. But a guy that character wise, I like him. The way he was with with his when his brother was in the WWE was phenomenal. was great. And that is Gold Dust. From WCW to WWE, he is is Dusty Rhodes' first son. And he's a guy that just great, grand, awesome. You know, there's not you know, you know, and, and Gold Dust is a character that at first I was thrown off by, but after really looking into the character and really learning about wrestling and stuff like that, I enjoy the character. Heath Slater, he does it for the kids. Heath Slater, he has so much more more than what he's been given. That's all I've really got to say about him because I don't want to spend too much time. Jeff Hardy, legend. First uh, Hall of Famer. He will be a two-time Hall of Famer as Jeff uh, – Hopefully it'll be a two-time like Ric Flair because I believe he Team Extreme deserves to go in the Hall of Fame, but also Matt and Jeff Hardy individually because what they have done has been groundbreaking. Then you go from them to the one and only mass wrestler. I wish there were some more mass wrestlers in the WWE. Kalisto, small guy, fast, fluid, fluid. Hopefully he really hasn't. Got got much in recent, but maybe one day down the road, man, maybe throw him in there with the cruiserweights, let him do something, and then let him be a guy that maybe breaks out of the cruiserweights one day. And it's like you could throw him into the cruiserweight division, break out of the cruiserweight division, go on, win the Intercontinental Champion, show that hey. Then you go to two guys who were in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and then when and they came along with AJ to the WWE, but they debuted at different times, and that is Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows, the club. They, they're a tight tag team. They've been tagging for a good while together. They know each other inside and out, but they haven't had their due. Even though they've held the tag team titles, they haven't really got their due. Like they, you know, the respect, their honor. They're, they're showing like they did in our in other federations when they were tag team. The short t- few matches I think they had in ROH, but the majority of what they did in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Then we've got a guy who's inactive, hasn't appeared in over 30 days, and that's Mark Henry. Hopefully Mark Henry can have one last, one, one last run in Mark Henry, because he's a legend. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He was with, he, back in the day, I forgot the, the team he was with, uh, they had, all, they had all the other black superstars, super, had the rock in it. Nation of Domination, first ballot Hall of Famer, is fucking the... the Hall of Pain on SmackDown was phenomenal. Then you go, I've already talked about The Miz. Then you got R-Truth. R-Truth has been a world champion outside of the EW. R-Truth is the one guy that I know whose theme hasn't changed in years. Years. He's the one guy that, that he is a little bit older, but in the ring, man, he's still just as fluid as he was years ago. Hell, his stuff was little Jimmy. His stuff when he were he he was in the main event. His stuff with the Miz years ago when they were a tag team. That was just awesome stuff, and I enjoyed it. Our truth is one of my faves. Rhino, he's not one of my faves, but I do respect him and, and like like him and all that jazz. From everything he's done in, in other federations to the WWE, maybe some, maybe you know, maybe he can, him and he Slater as a team can get something down the road. Then you go to. Roman Reigns, the guy that, that everybody calls the next John Cena. This, this. No, he's not the next John Cena. He's not this. He is the next Roman Reigns. Who talks about this is his yard? He's a little bland on the mic to me, to me sometimes. He's a little bland with what he does and skill-wise in the ring. The ring, and I can see why that gets, you know. But 
He is there. He's got a purpose. He is going to make make himself just more and more valuable to the WWE as the years comes. And 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 sometimes I'll boo Roman. Sometimes I'll be be on board for Roman, depending on the match, depending on the situation, depending on how he's been carrying himself. But Roman Reigns, he's got a few. He's he's got plenty plenty of big time matches and main events ahead of him. Then we've got a guy that I want to beat, Brock Lesnar. A guy that I want to choke out Brock Lesnar on pay-per-view and take the Universal Champion in Samoan Joe. Samoa Joe, a guy that I've been a fan of since he was on TNA. A guy that on TNA alongside Christopher Daniels, Kazarian, AJ Styles, Chris Saban, Alex, Alex Shelley, and many others, I was glued to the television because of him. Hell, his matches on TNA with Kurt Angle were freaking amazing. They were 10 out of 10, 5-star matches. And what he's done recently on Raw has been great. He's one of the toughest guys, guys tough as nails on Raw. Then we got the other half of the Revival. Scott Dawson ain't really got anything to say about him other than Revival Awesome. Then we got Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is a guy that that I went back and looked at his, some of his indie work. His indie work, mind-blowing. His work with in, him when the Shield were together, Dean Ambrose. Do you realize that the Shield is all on one show? I just realized that. Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns are all on one show. But... They make them have very minimal interaction with each other. But Seth Rollins is one of the top superstars on Raw, in my opinion. It's great to see him on WWE 2K18 covered. Hopefully that game is badass. And it's just fun. He's, just, he's just a guy that, even though Simone Joe gave him an injury, he went and defeated the Triple H at WrestleMania. And he has made sure that, that every time he gets in there, and his feud was brought with... Bray Wyatt has been pretty decent, could be better, but he's just an overall guy that, 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 that I see, and I'm like, go Seth Rollins. Then you go to a guy that I've been a fan of since since back in the day when he was shooting was Daniel Bryant, back whenever he debuted, and he was king of the ring, and for his first time as WWE champion, and so on and so forth, and that is Sheamus, who is one half of the tag team champions, and I've got to talk about Sheamus for a minute, because Sheamus just... His character is good. He's feel, you know, he's got a little dull here and there, 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 but he's always picked himself, his piss up up. He's always been one of those guys that I don't care who you are. Get in the ring with Sheamus, you're gonna feel the pain. You're gonna feel the intensity. He, he, he is stiff, but he's also strong. And then we go to the last one on here, Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil is a big guy. And I want, and I kind of dig what he's doing. Oh, it was Titus Worldwide and the brand, but it's, but then at the same time, he's just really bland. It's like you, you got these good qualities, qualities, but, those, but you make those good quali qualities be bland at times and boring. And it's just like, oh, Titus O'Neil. But anyway, overall, I'm hyped for great balls of fire and to see where. The Raw goes throughout the rest of the year. But yeah, that's just me talking about the Raw roster. I'll do the same thing with SmackDown, the women, <laughs> NXT, and the Cruiserweights in future videos. Hopefully you enjoy this. And if there's anything wrestling-wise you'd like to see Chris Lee about 13 talk about or give his opinion on, comment in the comment section below or send me a message through social media. And remember, hit the like if you enjoyed it. If you want to see more content from yours truly, hit that subscribe button. And thank you all for joining in the fun. See you all in the next, the next.